Hello, and welcome back to the song. We can surely go up there. And I think we should do just that. Sadri asked me to clear out the cellar so they could store the furniture there, and I came across some old clothes that must have belonged to Grandpa. They don't look like anything we wear here anyway. I had to throw them all out. Some sours had made their nests in them and chewed them all up. I wonder what it was like up there. The storm. Did you ever go back? You said it drove Grandpa completely crazy, but I never got a chance to talk to him about it. No, uh, he never talked about anything much. The old man wasn't the chattiest of folks. The wind picked up. I, I don't remember how old I was. I could probably stand on my own two feet. That was a long time ago. When a storm like that came along, I wasn't allowed to go outside. I wasn't allowed to do much, come to think of it. Those were different times, I... Then everything stopped. That part, you know. But up there, oh, the raging storm stuck, the wind howled and howled, it was enough to drive you mad. We couldn't live up there anymore, you see, so we came down here. And now that they're stuck of climbing down again, will it ever end? Hmm, I don't suppose we can get to the other side. Oh well. Wait, that's not the right way. Here. Isa, thank you for your support. Thanks to you, we can continue to work to protect three humped Saurians. Without your help, we would have never have been able to renovate our shelter. I am also happy to announce that the time has come. We've begun releasing some of our rescued Saurians back into the wild. This time, we are working with sparkle shroom growers to preserve sh shaded areas vital to Saurians. I'm confident that reintroducing them back into their natural habitat will be a success. It's still unclear how we're going to help the remaining ones adapt to life on the Great Plain. But now that this first phase is complete, at least the species' survival is assured. Thank you again. Hmm. Oh, 
How should I put it? I'm kind of lost. We were there. So that's definitely not the right way. Down here, maybe. Is this the place we came from? To the peaks I go, come what may. From chasm to salt marsh I make my way. To the peaks I go, come what may. To find my true love again one day. To find my true love again one day. Up in the clouds I went astray. From ravine to frozen pass of grey. The clouds watch me as I make my way. Will I find my true love again one day? Will I find my true love again one day? So was saying that to himself as we gathered the li lichen for hot drinks. I asked him to repeat it to me later. When he was young, so would hear the old women sing that song. Let's just say he's not as young as he used to be. The clouds watch me as I make my way. To him, it's a confirmation. The song is a map. Following the words will lead us to the ballasts. Matt didn't say a word, and she can usually outer, out chatter out with B. We returned empty-handed, but it felt good to be climbing as a trio again. Like when we first set out on our climb. Everything was so much simpler back then. Later, Matt told me she's tired of this expedition. She's sick of all the water in the clouds stuff. She doesn't believe in it anymore, or not enough. She doesn't know what to do. Return to low tide. Is there even anyone left there anymore? She dares to ask the questions I merely write down. If busts were real, why would they stay in the clouds? Could they be stuck here because the cycle stopped? Or is, it, is their presence stopping the world from waking up? And what am I doing on this hunting expedition? I miss my lighthouse. Is Highfield's old sand dial in someone's thoughts too? One place for the ocean and another for the sun. Are there others? No one seems to be paying these old shipwrecks from another era much notice. We've gotten used to them by now. If we've forgotten that, what else have we forgotten? It worries me to see Matt withdraw into her shell more and more with each sleep. But she's still climbing. Come what may. I might be lost again, or these places look the same.
we've got this shortcut for a reason. We docked for a while at the home of an old local farmer, Gal. To him, always having a wall within reach and a roof over your head is comforting. A feeling of safety you don't get in the open air. He made me laugh. The sky? No thank you! I saw it once and it made me dizzy. Gal seems to be all alone in the world, but he can bring himself to leave the tower. We don't have to ask twice for him to tell us about water. He mainly remembers the sound it made when he was just a tadpole, as he put it, and the silence that followed the drought. He spoke of full canals and waterfalls, of mud and pruny skin, and I wasn't the only one listening. In the light of the glowing mushrooms, people's faces were exhausted, but their eyes were bright. The entire group hung onto his every word. Who will listen to the stories once we're gone? We ended up staying at the farm, delaying our departure just a little longer. There was no shortage of excuses. Gull's farm needed extra hands. There was a building frame to repair, spare parts to track down, ropes to replace. It felt good to be working on something concrete, rather than wearing myself out on an interminable climb chasing after legends. Probably the same feeling that keeps me cra carving my little sculptures. When it was time to leave, Matt stayed behind. There was no need to explain. The group understood. All of us were secretly hoping to stay at Gal's farm. Well, I was. But I guess I'm still holding out a glimmer of hope for this expedition. Saying goodbye to Matt was probably the hardest thing I've had to do since I started this climb. I don't know if I feel like writing anymore, or have the energy to. Goodbye. Maybe. Jen, are you still around? How are things out there? Still no rain? I hosted a group of from your part of the tower here, of chasing clouds or whatever's in them. We had a great time and I got a new housemate out of it too, a youngster who reminds me of you. It would be nice having two of us to run what's left of the farm. Hey old man, great to hear from you and I'm glad to know you're in good company. Cass and I were actually just talking about the old jobs I used to do. It's been a while now since the harvest, hasn't it? When I think back to it now, it seems crazy how many people would come help you pick the sparkle shrooms. 
Well, mostly because of the pies would make them for a snack time. You know you never did gave me the recipe. Why did they do that? Oh no. Oh, I see now. No more water, eh? We'll see about that. I'm sure if you dig deep enough, there's water to be found. No one believes me, but I believe in myself, and that's the main thing. Come on, old boy, it will prove them wrong. The worst that can happen is that I'll find treasure, or a caramel seam. That's some good stuff, caramel. Wrong button.
This morning I forgot to put lichen in my drink, but drank it anyway. And then cried tears of joy because my toast was so delicious. I'm so wound up, I can't get anything done. I don't know if I should blame the drought, the evacuation that started, or the end of the world. Anyway, I've got mushrooms to grow. And this is where I'm gonna end this part, so for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.